As always, everybody ready? Okay, good. Well, first off, uh, good to see everybody today. Um, really looking forward to this weekend for a number of reasons. Obviously, having the number one team in the country come in and play against us. But uh, more importantly, you know, we'll be wearing our dress blues. We're calling them this week. Um, you know, in honor of uh, it's Stars and Stripes Day, where we're going to honor the veterans and um, specifically Fort Drum, the 10th Mountain Division. We'll have uh, a bunch of personnel coming down. Uh, a few buses are coming down with those folks, and uh, we're going to have an opportunity to have some of their personnel speak to our kids. Uh, Friday night before the game, Coach or Captain Durso, I call him Coach uh, Captain Durso, is going to speak to our kids. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll have a bunch of personnel uh, with our players. And you know, the other thing that's great about this weekend is the uh, opening of uh, Plaza 44 and the unveiling of uh, some statues, Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and of course, uh, and of course Floyd Little. Um, also the dedication to the uh, Ensley Indoor Facility and Cliff and his wife Sue will be here, which will be really neat. Um, and I know he's excited about uh, unveiling the uh, Schwarzwalder uh, statue as well. So from a historical standpoint, pretty neat day for us here at Syracuse to you know, honor and reflect backwards towards uh, some of the people that uh, have done great things here. And then living in the present, uh, a chance to honor those troops that give us an opportunity to uh, coach football, play football, and live uh, with the freedoms and liberties that we all have here. So I'm excited about those two things as well as the game. As far as the game's concerned, you know, we'll have a well-coached football team. Coach Sweeney's done a great job. He's really got those, uh, those kids playing well, and they're, they're rolling. They really are. Um, very talented football team, as we all know. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the country will be coming in here, and Deshaun Watson. So that'll be a great challenge for our kids and our team. Uh, I think uh, Clemson does a great job, both sides of the ball. You know, Brent Venables does a great job defensively. Um, he's got a real good, uh, a real good scheme with a lot of, a lot of talented players. Uh, you know, from the D line all the way back to the secondary, uh, a great middle linebacker that uh, uh, does a great job in B.J. Goodson. Um, so great football team. We're getting ready to play and uh, be one heck of a challenge for us. Um, and with that, any questions? Go ahead, Mark. Coach, uh, you said they're rolling. Um, yeah. Your team isn't exactly. So this would appear to be kind of David versus Goliath. So what's the pep talk for the guys? Well, I think more than anything, it's just um, you know trying to trying to continue to craft what we're trying to do here. And uh, another opportunity to play a great team in the dome is is a lot of fun for our kids. So our mindset uh, going into this is you know definitely major underdogs as we know, um, and that's why you play the game. And uh, it'll be a great opportunity for you know, our, our older kids to play against number one team in the country and all the young kids that have been playing a lot of football for us, a chance to, you know, see, you know, see what this team's like and a chance to compete. And it is uh, no doubt David versus Goliath type situation. Um, and that's what you live for. You know, I asked the players the other day, you know, how many of you guys dreamt of playing the number one team in the country when you were a kid? Whether it's uh, in, in the backyard or growing up as a high school player when you started to see that you were gonna get recruited. Um, and you know, the whole room put their hand up. So great opportunity for us, Mark, to go out there against number one team in the nation. Um, you know, Rex Kopecker sent in his yeah. financial aid agreement, so a quick two-parter on him. Um, first, what, what do you like in him as a prospect? Would he still see, you know, him want to develop as a quarterback? And has anyone else sent in uh, paperwork yet? No, right now it's just Rex. Um, you know, we are, are, are recruiting to see if we can get a few more at the mid-year and feel good about that. But it's exciting, really exciting for me uh, to uh, welcome Rex Culpepper and his family into the program. Um, you know, he's a young man from Plant High School, one of the better schools down in Florida, as you know. Um, you know, they have uh, unbelievable talent down there for years and years. And a chance to uh, get a young man like Rex Culpepper is just uh, extremely exciting for us. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that I didn't know that we were going to have a shot at him, to be honest with you. You know, early on he had Miami, he had uh, Ohio State, he had uh, Florida, he had Virginia Tech, he had damn near everybody. And, uh, you know, Coach Lester did a nice job recruiting him, and uh, we had a great relationship with uh, those folks at Plant. Uh, so the Culpeppers came up, and they were excited to see the campus, and uh, 
we just hit it off, you know, the personalities and the, uh, the value systems probably as much as anything um, were what hit home with me. And you know, Rex is a young man, I don't think he's ever gotten a B on his transcript. He's something like a 4-2 on a 4-0 scale. He's extremely bright, he tested extremely well. Um, you know, he had high hopes for the season and unfortunately this summer he had a knee injury so they've they fixed his knee and, uh, and they held him out this year and uh, he's looking great. He's excited to get here as we are to have him here. Um, but um, he fits right in with what uh, we've been trying to do recruiting. Obviously, he continued to upgrade the talent level being in the ACC, <coughs> but also recruit uh, high character young men that have uh, an academic uh, background that's strong and also off the field, uh, a young man that uh, you know, shows a lot of unselfishness because of his involvement with things that are uh, more important than his own life. You know, he spends a lot of time uh, with uh, his community service for, for the last few years. He's been going to a camp and helping out uh, you know, uh, young, young folks, young men that uh, you know, unfortunately have some uh, severe disabilities. And I love that about him and his family. Um, you know, just to the core, they're great people. So really excited about uh, getting Rex Culpepper up here to play us. The second part of the question, sorry. Um, you know, <coughs> he can throw the ball, he can run the ball. He's really smart, so I think he'll be able to manage the game well, um, you know, with his intelligence. Um, it's a matter of getting him here. It'll be exciting for him to get in here and be able to start uh, practice here for spring ball and, um, and really take it and run with it. You know, there'll be a lot of developmental things we'll have to work on <coughs> with him knowing that going from high school, albeit a really good high school program that plays great football, um, you know, the college system and, and learning how to play the game with so many more things out in front of you with uh, coverages and blitzes and all the things that, that we have um, in this conference, especially the ACC, you see everything. Uh, so his development will be, uh, it'll be uh, you know, interesting and fun to watch as he moves forward, but uh, Coach Lester will do a great job with him. Yeah. What thought do you give to uh, shutting him down and protect him for his Well, I think the big picture part of the question with Eric and all of our players, the number one priority is to make sure that uh, they're healthy before we put them on the field and listen to the doctors. And if there's a green light, we play them. And if they tell us that we shouldn't, we won't. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, with regards to the injury situation, you know, we'll update everybody on uh, the full status of the roster. Uh, tonight after practice with uh, the ACC policy, but um, you know, first and foremost, it's it's uh, it's just a game. We need to be, you know, in tune with protecting our players, and uh, that's the number one priority. Can I follow up with something? So if he is healthy this week, you're if any of our players get the green light from the doctor and they say he's good to go, then then we'll play him. If you know, if uh, they're the best opportunity, if they're the best option for our team, so. Especially after the USF game. Well, he's doing some he's doing some good things. Um, you know, in the USF game, he did some good things too. He had a penalty called on him. You know that um, I think that might be what you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, but he, yeah, but uh, he's doing good. You know, he's a freshman back there, uh, learning his way. Never as fast as we want him to, but um, he's a great kid, an extremely uh, sharp young man, uh, great family, good character, young man. Uh, Getting better, learning how to read the quarterback a little bit better, learning how to play, uh, play football. You know, play football at a higher level. Um, like a lot of the young guys on defense, unfortunately, sometimes it's going to be baptism by fire, especially in this conference. And uh, you know, uh, Witt's doing a great job, and I'm excited about his future here. Yeah. I think a couple times in the last week you've talked about uh, how you like to show your your players that you're controlling the controllables with regard to your job security. When it comes to recruiting and these kids ask you, you know, are you going to be here for four years? How do you handle that situation? What do you tell those kids? Well, I just tell them I want to be, and that's the goal. And uh, all the things that we're putting together in our process. When I talk to the kids in recruiting, um, whether it's you know a couple years ago, my first you know went my first start at it, or today, tomorrow, um, it's the same message. You know, it's like here's where we're going. Here's how we're going to ramp up the program. Here are the models that uh, you know we've been a part of, or we think are comparable to ours, and this is where you fit in. And um, 
when they ask those questions, I, you know, I tell them the truth. I say, I got another year on my contract and uh, I'd like to be here for a long time. And uh, if you join us, you'll help us be here longer. <laughs> so that's the way I approach it. Simple as that, nothing more. Just that with regard to 2015, you tell us because you've got one more year? Just what I said. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, two more questions. Matt and then Nate. Uh, I know injury report comes out tonight. Coach Lester was saying, <clears throat> when we talked to him on Tuesday, kind of how Zach is looking less nervous, I guess, than he was before LSU with a good chunk of reps in practice. What yeah. have you seen from him in, in the reps that he's Sure, Zach, Mo yeah, Zach Mone's done a nice job. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's done a you know thing. Thing Zach does a nice job is he prepares well. Um, he knows who he is and he knows who he isn't, and I think he uh, plays within himself, which is a, which is a really important uh, part of being a good quarterback. Um, so you know, his I think his preparation and understanding those things uh, give him give him a chance to be uh, competitive for us. Um, and I know he's excited to play again. You know, like I think. Uh, somebody asked a question the other day on a teleconference about ha have I ever been around a situation where uh, a walk-on gets a start against uh, two high-caliber teams like LSU and Clemson, and I was like, nope, <laughs> haven't seen that, <laughs> haven't seen that. So you know, he's excited. He's done a nice job preparing. Last question, Nate. Uh, I went back and looked at the 2013 recruiting class. It was the first one that you were really brought in. Yeah, there. that one was that was a crazy one there with all the change agents. Yeah. Are you talking about the recruiting class or the coaches I was recruiting? Because <laughs> at that time I had a lot of things going on, um, you know, and that was tough because there were a lot of change uh, elements going on. The reality of the situation was uh, was tough, and you know we had recruited uh, some kids that decided to go in another direction. You know, when Coach Marone uh, went to uh, Buffalo and, and the staff, um, so we were boy we were hustling around to try to. Uh, see if we could solidify that class. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. A, a couple guys in that class are still on the team, not playing because of injury, yeah. but, but I counted four that are actually contributing yeah. as of right now. Does that kind of underscore the challenges that you're seeing this year? Is, is the, no, the, not at all. I think class, totally different situation. I think, um, you know, in my opinion, we've had um, two full recruiting classes, you know. I think that class right there was one that, you know, was, uh, you know, we were running around by the seat of our pants trying to finish the class up and make good decisions. And um, the next year was our full year of actually recruiting, you know, putting together the deal. Because that class, we hadn't even had our whole staff together, you know what I mean, for that. Um, so the next two seasons uh, of recruiting were probably, you know, the ones that we actually had a chance to sit down and, and say, okay, what are we looking for? What type of player, what type of people? Um, and I've been extremely pleased with, uh, you know, the, 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 the two full recruiting classes that we've had, um, you know, both uh, on the field, good football players, off the field, no issues, and in the classroom. You know, last year's class, uh, freshman class, finished up the spring semester with like a 3.2 GPA, which was the highest uh, they've had here. Um, so I think, uh, you know, hats off to the coaches for doing a good job with that. And, and also coming off a difficult season, um, you know, we still uh, have people like Rex Culpepper jumping in because uh, they believe in uh, the vision of the staff and what we want to do. So I think that speaks volumes to uh, my coaching staff and the job they've done. Any predictions for quarterback? I don't know. We'll see. That's going to be a big one. Um, you know, I know my son's excited. He, we thought he was out, but yeah, he's back. So we'll see what happens. So. We'll see a little shoulder injury, but uh, he's overcome it and he's excited for that. And uh, you know, I can promise you, Saturday night I'll be at home watching that game on DVR. <laughs> so all good. All, good. all right, have a good day.